Okay, well, thanks, George. Um, so it's good to be here. And I have a, actually have a question for all of you before we start. Uh, who, who here has a birthday today? Yes, my mom's birthday today. So mom is here. So um, thanks for coming on your birthday, mom, on Groundhog Day. All right. So and mom had a question. Mom had a good question for us. And it's our first question has to do with the, uh, the iPhone. So I'm going to share my iPhone screen here. And we'll, um, we'll answer this first question. Just give me a second here. Make this a little smaller. OK. All right, so sharing my screen, we'll do this. We've done this before. I think we're getting good at it. OK, here we go. All right, so today's first question goes to the birthday girl from the birthday girl and the answer from me. OK, it has to do with Safari. Okay, so I'm going to go to Safari here. And mom's question is, how do I make the Safari uh, address bar that's down here at the bottom. Um, how do I make that be back at the top where it used to be? Okay, so that's a good question. That This is something that happened in iOS 15. They um, they took what used to be up the top, they put it down at the bottom. So how do we do this? Well, we're gonna, <clears throat> we're going to, um, we're gonna go to settings is what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna swipe up here and I'm gonna search for settings. And here we are in settings. And it turns out that um, in settings, there's a, a, a particular place for Safari settings. So you scroll along here and you find them. Now, if we were really smart, really, really smart, we'd go up here and search for Safari, right? We just say S-A-F and we'd find the Safari. You gotta, gotta be able to type, but all right, Safari. So, in the Safari settings, you will see all kinds of settings, including this one down here. So this is the one Apple thinks they've done a good thing by putting it, putting the tab bar down here. Now, it's not just a matter of moving it up and down. It's 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 more than that. When it's when it's down here at the bottom. It's a tab bar, which is more like a um, like what you get on the Mac, where you can have multiple tabs in a single window, and that's what you get when it's down there. But a lot of people just want to work with one one web page at a time, so they want this. So I'm going to turn that on now, and you'll see when I go back to Safari. Now it's up here. Okay. So that's how you do that. Easy as pie. Now, the, not to make an argument for Apple's decision why they put it at the bottom, but it is closer to your thumb. So if you're holding your, your iPhone, um, you, it might be an easier reach. It's, I don't, mm, a lot of people don't find that's a good trade off. Okay, so that's, that's the first question. So thank you, mom, for the question. All right, so got a lot of questions. Um, some some really good questions from last week's meeting and I've just uh, sort of consolidated them here in this big list. So one of the questions was in photos on the iPhone, can uh, Siri find my photos of Lake Tahoe in 2019? And the answer is probably yes. So um, let me see here for a minute. Give me just a minute here. Let me get, uh, whoops. I Sorry, I clicked the wrong thing, but just give me a minute. I'll get back to my photos here. Um, okay, I gotta share that again. Here we go. Okay, so so I'm looking at um, looking at photos on my iPhone, and and here it is. Lots of photos. Okay, so we want to find pictures that this our, our question came from uh melissa green so could siri find my photos of lake tahoe in in 2019 well that's a slightly different question that i'm going to answer but I'll, maybe we'll get there i'm gonna go here to, down at the bottom we have uh, a search button and it's really handy to be able to do this so i'm gonna i'm going to 
I'm going to click tap down here on the on the search button, and we are going to search for, as they say up here, photos, people, and places. So I'm going to search up here for. Um, I don't think I've been to Lake Tahoe to take pictures, but I'm going to go. I'm going to search anyway. Here's Lake. Oh, looky here, Lake Tahoe. I don't have any Lake Tahoe pictures, so we're going to go somewhere else. We're just going to look for lake. If I look for lake, I find 101 pictures that match lake, and they are right here. Um, now, in terms of places, and, and so if we let's look at those for a minute. So I'm going to tap. I'm going to tap up here in this top line. And what we've got here are 101 pictures that have a lake in them. Okay, there's a lot of water and stuff, and maybe one of them's the ocean, but it's it's pretty close. So that's not not bad. I'm going to go back here. I'm going to search, go back to the search. And what we have here, if we go back some more. Um, let's search for lake again. When you see here, we had 101 pictures that were pictures of lakes. Now, I didn't categorize these, but the uh, the iPhone figured it out, which is a miracle. These pictures here with the little pin, these are places. These are these are places that have uh, the word lake in them. So I have a house that's in a subdivision called Lake Forest Village. And if I go there, I'm going to find an awful lot of pictures that I took of, of the yard or whatnot. So now here they are. You know, these are there's, there's plenty of pictures here, 4,368. 4, and, you know, it's just they're just pictures I took in the house um, of the dog. So so anyway, searching is easy. And it turns out that with the search again, with the search, if I go back to. To searching here with our little search button down at the bottom. There is a microphone here, so you can ask for things by voice. So I'm gonna look for um, pictures that were, I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for pictures that I took in Kentucky. So I'm just gonna tap this button here, this microphone, I'm gonna say Kentucky, we'll see what happens. Kentucky. All right, and so there, here I have a bunch of pictures of Kentucky and it's exactly what you would think, it's a bunch of horses and whatnot, my friends there. But anyway, so that's that's pretty handy to be able to do that. So um, good question by by Melissa. And I'm going to try just this. I didn't I didn't quite read her question right. Her actually question was, can Siri find my can Siri find my photos of Lake Tahoe in 2019? Well, I'm going to just ask Siri right now on my phone to find me pictures that were taken in uh, Oregon, right? So I'm gonna, I'm just gonna push the side button over there. You know where it is? It's right around here. Unless you've got a uh, a home button. If you've you've got an iPhone with a home button, you'd be pressing down at the at the bottom at the home button. So I'm gonna press this in, hold it, and just say, "Show me pictures in Oregon." So here we go. Show me my pictures from Oregon. And let's see. It certainly doesn't look like Oregon. It looks like Kentucky. Well, I think um, I think the answer to your question was no. You Siri can't find your pictures of Oregon. I'm gonna try one more time. Show me pictures from Oregon. Here are some images of Oregon from the web. Ah, I did better. Um, so those were pictures. Those are pictures of Oregon from other people. Let me try one more time. Show me my pictures of Oregon. Yeah, I can't do it. Okay, so you're better off getting into photos and searching up here and it works. All right, let's see. I'm gonna to look to see if we've got questions in the chat. You, you you do, you have one from David. David, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Uh, yeah, um, Christian, thanks. I use that all the time, but within that, can you go further and find pictures from a specific, a specific year in okay. place? Okay, let's, let's try that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna look for, um, I'm looking for pictures I took in Texas, and I find, as you can see, 8,396 pictures. Now I'm going to put in Texas, I'm going to put in um, uh, 2015, and now I'm down to 860. 
How you like that? That's good, yes? Yeah, that's great. Okay, yeah, super. Okay. So it's, so it's reading the metadata and the images from the phone? That's it. So in the, what's nice about this is you don't have to do anything. You know, your phone, like your phone knows where you are when you take the picture and it knows when you took the picture and it's all recorded with, with the picture. So that's, um, that's an awfully nice feature. It does all that stuff in the background and you don't have to do anything. So, you know, just to do one more example, I could, I could search for pictures of um, cows. So if I search for cow, uh, I guess I've got two whole, here's, well, I have various cow pictures. I've got cows down here. I've got a person who's named cow. That's not really <laughs> very nice. Um, but, you know, if I tap where it says, cow right here. I'm going to see 31 pictures of cows. In fact, you can see them right down here. Now, let me show you sort of the fun of this. This is, um, that's a cow. And I'm just going to swipe through. That's a cow. That's a big cow. Holy mackerel. <laughs> this is not a cow. This is a, this is a dog and it's a painting of a dog even. And so Siri, uh, Siri didn't quite get it or, you know, Apple didn't quite get it right there. Um, here's some more cows. That the house in need of paint. Okay, so it, it is quite amazing, and it's all behind your back. So it's um, definitely worth exploring. You should uh, try doing some searches in Photos, and of course, it works almost exactly the same way on the Mac. Just doing it on the phone today, um, really no particular reason. All right, uh, Peter, what's your question? Uh, not so much a question, a statement. I've uh, found an article that describes how to use Siri to search for objects in photos. I've put it in the chat. Yeah, I see. Maybe maybe I need to look at that link and learn something. Okay, so um, let me let's do another one that came from our meeting last week. So last week, um, Saturday, we had a class about the iPhone. One of the things that people really liked, I think, was these widgets. So I've got a widget with a great big clock up here. And these are widgets too. This is showing my schedule. You see the next thing I've got to do is at 10 o'clock my time, because I'm in California, is uh, talk to my friend Kayvon. And over here, I've got my to-do list. And over here, I've got the weather. And over here, I've got a picture that just um, kind of floated up magically. And these widgets are neat because they show you information without you doing anything. So. Uh, most of the time, if, like if you tap the weather app, you'll see what the weather is. But here I see it already. So that's why widgets are kind of neat. And same with the calendar. If all you've got is a little calendar icon on your screen, you have to tap the calendar to see when your next appointment is. Here I see it already. So the question was asked, um, if I delete a widget, what, what happens? Do, do the icons rearrange? And the answer is, um, is yes. So I'm going to I'm going to put a uh, a widget on this page. Okay, so I'm going to, uh, to 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 make a widget. I'm going to put my finger on the screen and hold it till it wiggles. And up at the very top, there's a plus. Now, if you don't see the plus, you might have something in the way of my my screen here. Um, try to push that stuff out of the way. But there is a plus at the upper left, so I'm going to hit that plus. And now. Um, I see all the widgets that I could possibly put in. And I'm gonna put in a, a widget that has to do with, with the time because since I'm dealing with uh, multiple time zones around here, I think it'd be ha handy to have this world clock. So before I do it, I just wanna remind you, what this is what it looks like right now. I've got the post offices app up the top left corner. I've got this thing about Visio and some other things like this. So when we, when we add that widget, I'm gonna add that clock widget now. And there are different sizes of widgets. There's, here's one that's that's wide, and here's one that's just take up uh, four spaces. This one takes up four spaces too, and this one as well. I'm gonna take this one. You know, I kind of like this one. So I'm gonna take this one. I tap it, um, and it, down at the bottom it says add widget. We're gonna add that widget. You can see that what it's done when I I'll, I'm gonna tap done up here to indicate that I'm done. And so everything moved, right? Everything moved. And 
I'm going to I'm going to tap on this and hold it again. I'm going to actually remove that widget and I'm going to add a smaller one, and you'll see what happens now. So I'm same thing. I'm going to I'm putting my finger I'm putting my finger right around here somewhere where there's nothing. I'm holding it until it wiggles. I hit the plus at the top left, and I'm going to go down here and I'm going to add this widget. That's the uh, the smaller version of the world clock. So I add this, and as you can see, what's happened here is. Um, the icons have been shuffled around. So this, this used to be in the top left corner and this one used to be next to it. So it had to move things around in order to fit my widget in there. And so the, all of this is to show you that, that if you remove the widget, which I'm gonna do now, everything goes back the way it was. So, um, you know, icons on the, on the uh, home screen always have to go they start top left and they just go down one at a time. You'll never get one down here all by itself. And the same with the widgets, although there's one more thing we can do. I'm gonna add that widget again. I'll hit the plus. I'm gonna have this, this world clock. And I'm, I do like this one better. So I'm gonna start with this. And right now it's, it's at the top. Every time you put a widget on the screen, it always goes to the very top and the top left, in fact, if there's if it if it has room to go left and right. So, you know, a big widget like this, it just goes to the top. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to put my finger on that widget and keep holding it and it, everything wiggles. And now I could I could put it down here if I wanted to. I could put it. Um, right there so I can move it around, but I still cannot park it at the very bottom because that's not the way it works. If I try to if I try to put it at the very bottom, it just it won't go. Okay, I can't I can't go um, into the sort of nothingness. You've got it. It's either at the top or it's here. You could go in between, but that's that. So now you know about widgets. Um, widgets are a lot of fun. In fact, with this widget, I'm gonna I'm gonna do one more thing with widgets here. I'm gonna show you how you edit the widget. I want to edit the widget so we can show the different times that I care about. So I'm, again, I'm going to put my finger on it. It's going to wiggle. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to edit widget. So now I get to pick these times. So where it says, you know, I've got Cupertino. Well, I'm going to tap there and I'm going to make that Los Angeles. Boy, it's hard to type these days. It's cold over here today. No one, I'm going to blame it on the cold. Okay, so there's one. And then here I'm going to put in um, instead of Tokyo and put in Austin. There it is. Okay, so I know what time it is in Texas. And down here, I'm going to put in Miami because I don't think that um, I don't think they know Naples. And I think do we have one more? Well, everyone needs to know what time it is in Paris. So let's let's just leave it like that. So now that I'm I'm done with this, one of the weird things about widgets is there's no there's no close box you look all over here and there's nowhere that says done or close or or even cancel but the widget itself if you were to look really hard you can see the widget is is just in this area what you do is you tap anywhere that's not that area so i'm gonna tap above it and here's my world clock now with the times that i care about and this one is dark because it's it's six PM over there. All right. So that's why that's like that. And I can see it's almost, it's almost noon for you. It's almost nine for me. It's almost 11 for Austin. All right. Well, that was a good question from Don Peacock. You, you have something similar from Linda. Linda, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Yeah, no, last week um, during the course, you showed how to edit the information on weather. I'd also ask about dark sky, but that doesn't have a widget. Well, my weather is showing what it is in Otis, Massachusetts. So I was just wondering if you could recap how to how to edit that. Probably the same as what you just showed, but similar. Yeah, let's, let's just let's just do it. I'm going to put a. I'll put that widget over here. It really doesn't matter where I put it. You can see I've been putting widgets all over the place. Here's a nice photos widget. Um, so I'm just going to put my finger on the screen, wait until it wiggles, hit the plus. I'm going to add the weather widget. So I'll be starting from scratch. And I could search, I can search up here for weather. And as I mentioned on Saturday, not every app has a widget, but every widget belongs to an app. So you, when you first start doing widgets, 
it's sort of tempting to go to the, the app store and start searching for widgets, but that, that's not how it's done. It's if the developer chooses to put a, a widget in the in his app, it's just there. So there's not a special widget section. So I'm gonna pick, we'll pick this one here. I'm gonna add this widget. And at the moment, it shows me um, the weather in Davis. Well, I'm gonna change that. I'm gonna put my finger on it. It wiggles, I'm gonna edit the widget. And um, I'm gonna put in a lo location. I'm gonna say, uh, let's put in Santa Monica. And now it's Santa Monica. Okay, so that's, that's how you do that. Now there's um, there's one other thing you can do with a widget that's kind of cool. I'm this is this is a widget a weather widget that has one weather on it, just one one city. I'm going to put one next to it that has more than one city. So what we do here is we're going to again hit the plus, but this time when we go through here, we are not going to just take a um, a single widget. What we're going to do is we're going to make a stack. Okay. So you see there's all these things in here and uh, none of them say stack except for this one, which is a smart stack. Well, you know, we're not gonna do it. I changed my mind on how I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna make another widget that's just like the Santa Monica weather one. I'm gonna hit the plus and we're gonna go down to weather again. And then you'll see, I'll make my own stack. So here's weather and I'm gonna, again, I'm gonna pick a place that I care about Okay, so I'm going to have the Davis weather and the Santa Monica weather, and you know, let's do let's do a couple more. I'm going to do um, now that I'm getting good at it. Let's go down here to weather again. Let's put in the weather for. Um, I'll make a widget the same same widget, but I'll change this one. I'll tap this, and um, we'll pick a different location. I'm going to have that weather be. Uh, we'll have it be Round Rock, Texas. And then finally, I'm going to make one more and then find out what the weather's like in uh, in Florida. Okay, so I'm going to hit the plus again. And you can see I'm kind of covering up the whole the whole screen with, with weather widgets. And this one I'm going to tap and I'm going to pick a location and I'm going to say um, Miami. I don't, well, let's see if they know Naples, Florida. Wouldn't that be nice? Let's see. There it is. Okay, good. We're going to get the weather in Naples. So now that I've done it, um, Oops, I hit the wrong button. Here's Naples, Florida. Good, done. So now I've got these four, but it's, it takes up the whole screen. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna drag one on top of the other. So I'm gonna take this one, just drag it on, drag this one and, and drag it on. And you, if you notice, you got really sharp eyes, you notice um, these little dots here, right about here, showing me I've got three in there now. So now I'm gonna grab this fourth one from Santa Monica. I'm gonna drag this on top. And so now I have all of these. When I tap done, I've got all, all of them. And there's good news and bad news here. The good news is that I've got all four. The bad news is you really can't tell because you don't see the dots, right? The dots are gone. So what you do though, is you put your finger on your widget and you just sort of scroll down a little bit. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tap up there and pull down just a bit. And you'll see um, I'm rotating through the other cities. So, and you see the dots show up when I do this, which is, I guess that's nice, but um, when they disappear, you kind of forget that, that they're there. So you have to know, you just have to remember that you did that. So it looks like you're having a nice day out there in Florida. Okay, then the other question about, that has to do with widgets, has to do with this widget here this big clock widget. So I'm gonna guess that everybody likes uh, to see the time in a big, a big way. So um, how do we do this? Well, this is one that's not built in. This is one where you have to get an app and the app is called Widget Smith. So I'll, um, I'll take us to the app store here and we'll go get it. I mean, obviously I have it or I wouldn't be able to do what I'm doing. So I'm gonna search for Widget Smith. And this is made by a guy um, named Smith, if I remember right. And so, so here's Widget Smith and I'm, I'm gonna tap it down here so you can just read a little bit about it. Now I've barely done anything with it. When you, what you do with Widget Smith 
uh, for free, you can do a little bit. And then if you, you pay them a little bit, you can, um, you can do a lot more. So just, just look at this widget here. Oh, there's an update for me and I should get that. But anyway, you, this is what you do. You would, you would get, you would get your, your widget Smith widget, and then you would go to make a widget. So I'm going to put the time, let's put the time on, um, let's put it on this page. So I put my finger on the, on the screen again, it wiggles, I hit the plus, and I'm gonna go up here and I'm gonna search for Widget Smith. And there it is. Now, if I didn't wanna do that, I could, just, I could just scroll. And these are all alphabetical. And here's Widget Smith. So most of these are standard Apple apps. Some of them are not, and that's Widget Smith is certainly not. So now that I've done this, I get to pick the size of the widget I want. So I want a, a, a bigger one like this, medium. Large is like this. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take this one. So medium. And they tell you what, what it's going to do. It says add to your home screen and then tap it and edit it. So, so we tap it and I add it. And you know there it is. But now I'm going to touch it here and um, edit the widget. And what happens here is you get to put, you get to sort of tell it what fills that space. So I could pick something else. And so I've, I've made another clock called medium one that looks like this. I've got a, a, a calendar widget and I'll tap this, put this back to my clock. I'm gonna tap this again. And now how did I get the big digital clock? Well, I made the big digital clock. So the way that's done is now we finally actually use the app. So if I look at the, the Widget Smith app here, here's the app and you can, you can see I created big digital clock. This was me. And when it says down here, add medium widget, it means that you're going to make one. So you, you touch it and you say, what kind of thing I want to put in there? Well, maybe photos, maybe, um, maybe a photo with the date on it. And it's just nice to look at just like this, but I, I liked the clock. So I, so I made, I made a clock and, um, like this, and then I customize the colors. So you can do that too. I, I want to show you one other thing before I before I do that, or maybe instead of doing that. Whenever you see a widget, you can tap the widget to go to that app. So let's say let's say we were here, and I wanted to look at my calendar, and we don't see the regular calendar app here, but I've got this widget. So what we do is we just touch it, and there's my calendar. Okay. Over here. I've got, I've got the weather, this weather app. Well, if I tap it, it takes me to the weather app because that's where the widget came from. So even though these things take up a lot of space, they, they actually include the, the functionality of the original icon. Now the original icon is still on here somewhere, somewhere I've got the calendar and I don't know where, but I don't need to see it. Here it is it's down here. Who wants to look at this when you can instead be looking at this, where you can actually see the schedule? Okay, so that's that's the advantage of widgets. All right. Um, Question about Widget Smith. Yeah, where do we? Okay, Widget Smith not available. Oh my gosh, I wonder if it's mm -hmm. a if it's a thing that's not available in England um, because obviously it's here for me. Mm -hmm. Oh my. Well, that happens it sometimes. Is uh, is this an iPad and an iPhone app? Uh, that's a good question. Let me see here. I'm, here's my iPad over here. You can't see it, but I'm gonna just do a fast search. Um, Widget Smith, there he is. Yeah, I see it, and indeed, it's it is um, available mm -hmm. on the iPad as well. Yeah. So. And Edwin is saying he just downloaded it in the UK. So Jill, maybe your search criteria wasn't quite right. Um, Edwin, if you, I don't know if you just typed in the uh, name. If you can, put that in the chat. We'll let Christian keep okay. going. Good, okay, yeah, make sure it's typed exactly like this, Widget Smith. Okay, so there's, that's pretty much the whole widget thing. Um, Widget Smith is a lot of fun. It's 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 kind of geeky, but it's it's a lot of fun. And when you look at some of these widgets that I have here, the the clock was a Widget Smith widget. 
this this one here was a widget smith widget and i think i've got some others too but there it it just lets you put information on the screen that you don't have to tap to to see you just you can just see it at a glance okay great and chris just put that uh link in the chat so those oh, of you chris. who want yeah Great, thank you, Chris. All right, all yours, Christian. Okay, so someone asked about, um, I think it was Jill, about apps being permanently displayed in alphabetical order rather than doing the search. Because what we were doing uh, the other day, we were we were searching for things and we went all the way to the end here. I'm doing this a slow way here so you can appreciate the fast way. Here's, here's the slow way. And then we went a little bit more and we got the app library. And what we learned was if we put our finger up here in the search box for the app library, we get an alphabetical list of all the apps on this iPhone, whether they are actually showing or not. Because remember, we learned how we could we could hide things too. Uh, they don't have to be visible, but they're visible to the app library. So the question is, can we just arrange things permanently in alphabetical order so we don't have to come here? That's a good idea. Well, first of all, let's. Um, I'm going to go back to the home screen, which I'm going to do by simply swiping up from the bottom. And now I'm going to swipe up one more time. It takes me all the way back to the beginning. Um, there is a way to rearrange your icons alphabetically, automatically, which destroys the way you might have arranged them. I mean, of course, you can rearrange them yourself, right? You can. I can take an icon that's down here at the bottom. And I can put it up here at the top. I can I can move that up there by by clicking, you know, tapping and and dragging it. I just keep holding it and I can just move it up there. I can do that. And so you could, you know, spend a rainy day putting all your apps in alphabetical order. But if you wanted to do it automatically, there is a way. And in fact, it's, it starts with the settings app. So in the settings app, there's um, there's a way to reset things. Now, I'm not going to do it because it's going to make a mess of my phone. Because you can see, it's obviously very carefully arranged. But the way you the way you do it is you go to General, and then you scroll down a little bit, and you go down here to uh, Transfer or Reset iPhone. Now, this is kind of weird. They make this sound like you're only going to do this if you were going to sell your iPhone or give it away. Not necessarily. So let's let's tap there, and I'm warning you not to tap there because you could make a mess of things and get mad at me. So if we were to uh, be interested in selling the phone or giving it away, we would do this one, okay? But that's not what we're gonna do. We're we're gonna tap reset. Now this is a, in my opinion, this is a very bad button because it looks like it's gonna do something right away but it's not. What it's gonna do is it's gonna pop up a screen and Apple typically gives you a clue that, that there's gonna be a screen with a chance to cancel. And this reset button, if you look here, it just looks like there's no dot, dot, dot. If, it's, it's, if it said dot, 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 you'd think, okay, I'm gonna get a, a, a panel, but you don't. But anyway, nonetheless, you do get this option to reset the home screen layout. So. This will put this put the icons back in the same order they were when it came from the factory, and then the rest of your stuff will be alphabetical. I think. I, I mean, I wouldn't really chance it, but if you if that's what you want to do, there you go. Okay, so that's um, that takes care of that. Now, I'm keeping an eye on the uh, on the the chat, it looks like we're good. Let me show you something else. And we last time we looked at. Um, at the home at the uh, control center, and we we did that. If we we pulled down like this, and we got the the control center, and we we decided that maybe we wanted to rearrange things down here in 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 this section, and put different things higher up. So the way we we do that is we we go to the control center in in settings. So this is the. the the very top of settings and, and you don't have to go very very far down so here's control center there so we'll tap there and the question was about these these little 
lines that kind of look like what looks like a menu on on a Safari web page. When you're looking at, at web pages on the iPhone, you often see something like that with which when you tap, you get a menu. But here it's their handles. So if I wanted to make the magnifier that's down here at the bottom, I want to put it at the top, I grab here and I drag it up. Okay, so I can touch it and then move it up. So that's what those those lines are about. So when I do this, and now I go to the control center myself, you see, I just added um, this one, I moved it to the top. And if I wanted to put, if I wanna make the flashlight be the first one, I'll, I'll just um, get back to the settings again. I'll just take the flashlight here and I'll just put this like that. So it's gonna go flashlight magnifier text size. And indeed that's what it does now, right? So. So that's what those handles are about. Okay, so that's, um, yeah, uh, thanks Mitch for pointing out, don't, if, if you uh, reset the home screen layout, you're gonna lose your folders too. You're gonna lose every kind of arrangement that you did yourself. So think, think hard about that. But if you really want it, it's there. Okay, let's see. Oh, there was another question about when you, when you have something that you want to, to print from the iPhone, like let's say I've got, um, here's this important letter from the men's warehouse. And I wanna, let's say I wanna print this. Well, it'd be nice if I hit the right one. I think, I think uh, right when I looked at, at the mail, I think uh, the junk mail filter from my, from my Mac put that message in the, in the junk. So, all right, well, we'll look at, we'll look at um, this nice, thing from the uh, the Home Depot. Suppose I want to print this. So here's, they're showing me that I bought something and now they're telling me I could buy these other things. Maybe I want to print this. So when we go to print, um, on on Safari, it's kind of, um, it's different, but here on, on, a, on an email, I don't have a share button, but I do have uh, this button here. So I'm going to touch that as if I'm going to reply I'm not going to reply, right? I'm not, re not going to write them back. I want to print it. But when I do that, I get this list of things I could do. And most of the time, this is exactly what we do. We, re we reply. But if I scroll a little bit, I see there are things that I can do, including print down here at the bottom. So um, now when you're, when you're here, all you can do is, is scroll and hit print. That's just the way it goes. So I can do this and up comes a print box. I could pick my printer here. Here's my printer and I could actually print this page. I'm not gonna print all of it because you can see down here across the bottom, the pages that are gonna print. I can just, there's a couple ways to do this. I can turn them off. I just uncheck them like this. And now I'm just gonna print page one. And I could also have done it up here. I said, well, I just want page one, but I'm gonna do it. Uh, I like it down here the way I did it. So, so let's let's do it again. Tapping, scrolling, and finding print. And I'm just going to take turn off page two and turn off page three here. Oops, wrong. There you go. And here it comes, coming out of the printer. So, um, print unfortunately is down there at the bottom. Now, when you go to let's say it's something else, like it's a uh, a web page. Let's go to a web page and let's say you want to print this. Well, now you've got what I would call a proper share button. When you do this and you scroll, you see my print is right up here at the top. The reason it's up here at the top is because I put it there. And the way I did it is I scroll, scroll, scroll down here until you get to edit actions. Okay, this one down here. So you gotta, you gotta go, go quite a ways, but once you do, you get a list and you can um, you can hit things that are, with these little pluses and they'll pop up to the top. So if I wanted to in Safari have a button that would automatically add a link to my home screen for that web page, I can hit this plus and then I can drag it up here and I can put it up here. So now, now if I'm 
if I'm looking at a web page, and I think this is so exciting, I want to I want to have a an icon for it. I can hit the share button, and we notice what's at the top of this now. It's add to home screen because I just put it there. So if I do this, it just it, it asks me what do you want it to say, and I'm going to change the name of it. This is awfully long, so I'm going to um, just clear that out, and I'm just going to put CB like this. So that's my web page, and then um, it's got the link. And I said add. When I do that, there it is. You see, it just added me. Okay. So now, if I want to go to my own web page, I touch this little face, and I'm there. Okay. So that's pretty cool. Um, but and, and so we had a couple of things going on there. We first of all, that's a neat way for you to get to web pages that you like a lot, things that you go back to a lot. You want to hit this share button, and then you want to find add to home screen. So that was good in itself. But then what was also good was that I moved add to home screen to the top by going to edit actions, finding it in one of these lists here, hitting the plus, and then dragging it around like that. Okay, if I don't want it in the top, I just take it out again. Okay, so that's good. That was a good question by Linda. All right. How can I customize this? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. How can I customize what's who is shown in the email and message sections of the share button? Oh, well, that's a good question, and I don't know that I've got the answer, but I'm gonna I'm gonna guess. How's that? So I'm gonna um, let's go to let's go to Safari here, and when you go to Safari, and, and when you hit the share button, basically I've done this. I've gone to I've gone to share, and really the, what the question is is how do we control this part right here and also this part right here but we'll do we'll do the top part first so what's happening here is this is this is airdrop thinking that i want to maybe airdrop it to one of my other iphones around here this this in this section here we have people that i have emailed uh or texted quite a bit so here, I, this is this is a little uh, messages icon. So is this, and here we have uh, an email icon. So if I tap, the thing to do is to notice that that when you um, when you see these people on here, you can um, you can tap to to send an. Uh, this, in this case, it would send an email to this person. In this case, it would send a text. So let's just let's just try them both. So I'll do the first one, and there's a text. Okay, that's a text message. All right. Let's do the other one here, the one that's got the email on it. And it all depends really on how much you how you use the phone. It, it's it's keeping track of what you do the most. And so this is actually Siri in action here now. Um, could I put someone else there? Could I pin somebody there? Maybe. So I'm going to say, um, let's say I want to put um, my friend Scott here. I'm going to tap him. Yeah. See, I can I can tell I can tell them to suggest him less often. Uh, but that's about all I can do. I don't think I can pin him. I'm going to hit I'm going to hit the options here and see. Yeah, that's that's for what it's going to send. So the answer to your question is I don't think so. Um, it's it should be people that you're contacting a, a lot all right it um it shouldn't be people that you never contact so i don't know what to say if it's if it's not doing it that way for you then i uh, it seems like something's a muck but the idea is that that siri siri is more than just listening to you and responding siri is watching you and making suggestions there okay in fact there's a siri widget where the Siri widget is going to suggest apps to you um, that they think you're going to want to use because you typically do use them either at that time of day or you use them a lot. And um, you know, so Siri is pretty good at that. But apparently for Donna, it is not so good. Um, sorry about that, Donna. OK, so I'm going to look for some more questions here. Uh, 
All right, the question was, can we have more than four items in the dock? Well, the way I've done it, I, the answer is, is sort, of, sort of yes and sort of no. You can't have more than four big icons in the dock, but you can, um, you can have more items in the dock if you sort of stack them up and make folders out of it. So that's what I've done here. So let's say, let's say I want to put a whole bunch of things, a whole, a whole bunch more things into the dock. I'm going to pile them up on top of this icon here. So let's say I really like, um, oh, I'm going to put the Zoom app down there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take Zoom from here. I'm going to drag it down to here. And so it's not going to replace. It's just going to pile up. And so here I go. I've got the Zoom icon. I'm going to keep holding it. It wiggles. If you, when you first touch it, it gives you a menu. If you just hold on to it, the menu goes away. So I'm gonna pull this down here. Here it comes. I'm gonna drop it right in here and it pops open a, a folder. They call this a folder. It doesn't look like a folder, but it's a, it's a grouping. And they, they give it a name. The name's not super uh, important. It's also not super accurate. So I'm gonna wipe out that name. I think I'll know what it is on site. So to wipe it out, I'll just tap here. So this folder's got no name. I'll just say done down here. I could type in my own name. It could be you know X Y Z. Oh, maybe that's a good name. <laughs> good good correction there, guys. So we'll just call it X. All right, my folder named X. And so now when I'm done, I'm going to tap outside of that folder. And now I'm done. And I'm going to tap on this on this iPhone. I can tap done up here can also swipe up or I could also tap where there's nothing. There's a lot of things I could do. I could even just wait long enough and it'll quit wiggling. So here I'm gonna do nothing. Let's just wait a while. Wait, wait, wait. Well, it's a short meeting. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna finish. <laughs> so. All right, so um, now you see down here, I've got extra, I've got two things in here. So technically I've got messages, mail, Zoom, all of this stuff and the camera. And, and so I do it like this. The reason I do it with um, this here, these are things that are often important, but the other things were always important. So, so I put these things down here because they're my favorites. And so I can tap it. If I tap this thing down here, there are not 387 things in there. There's, there's somebody's got a, um, there's some sort of counter that's showing me, oh, 300, Okay, 377 overdue to do's and 10 overdue reminders. So I'm a little late. That's why we get the 387. But the point is that I was able to tap this and very quickly go to the things I care about, like, like uh, dark sky, like, um, you know, like uh, the app store very quickly, or um, like the reminders, which I, you know, these are the things I use a lot. So I want to get to them easily, but I, I couldn't devote space in the dock to them completely. And so now that I've messed up my phone, I'm going to show you how you get out of this. I, I want to put Zoom back up on the, uh, the this home screen proper, and I'm going to put mail back in the dock by itself. So I'm going to have to tap down here and undo what I did. Notice there's no, there's no like big undo menu here. It's, it's too bad. So I'm going to take Zoom. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hold it. It wiggles. I'm just going to pull it out and park it. Maybe here is a good place. And that almost gets me out of this. I still have my little bitty icon down here for mail. I'm going to take this and just hold it and pull it out and just drop it back where it came from. Okay, so, so I messed up and I put it back. All right. More questions. Um, oh, can I rearrange the order of sub can, can 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 we get Alan in first? He's had his hand up for a long time. Great. A yes. Alan, can you unmute yourself and ask your question, please? Yes. You said that Siri watches you and keeps track of what you do. Is there any way you can prevent Siri from watching you and uh, seeing where you're going and all of the things you're doing? Is there any way you can blind Siri from any of that stuff? Yeah, yeah. In fact, um, I think Chris Chris Hart has answered this pretty well. It, when you go to the settings, here's here's our settings for the iPhone, and here's the Siri section. 
So we have, um, we can say that, uh, let's see, Siri. So these here is, is when, you know, Siri is making suggestions. Uh, this is when they make suggestions. And these are, um, let me see, down, down here, you can turn these things off here. So you can say, well, you know what? Um, don't make suggestions. Uh, let's just have Apple not make these suggestions. So you can turn off all these things. And you could also, I think you could do this. Um, if Siri's if Siri's not quite working right, you could basically start Siri over, and this might this might help out with um, uh, with Donna, whose whose Siri wasn't suggesting the right things. So this is where it's all controlled. So you can turn off a lot of these things, and um, you know, basically Siri is good, but if you don't, if you don't want it watching, then you can, at least you can, you can make it look like it's not watching. It may still be watching, but it won't display the results of what it, of what it found. Okay. So that's sort of answer. It's not a great answer, but I, but it's, um, it's, it's kind of there. So. Thank you. Okay, good. Uh, Sheena, how much time do we have? Uh, you have 15 minutes. Okay. So more questions, people, what do we got? I've got, I have a few, a few that are sort of canned here that I can look at. Melissa, got... Melissa, can you unmute yourself and ask a question? Well, it's not really a question, but I noticed, Christian, that my people in the share sheet, the little circles have disappeared. Um, okay. So I like that uh, for <laughs> sometimes, but um, <laughs> when it's just me and my uh, iPhone, I might like to bring them back. So I don't know, I've done uh, some change in my settings somewhere. Well, that's a great question. Well, this is, um, I think this is what we were just looking at. So it's like, here I am in photos and I, I wanna share this photo and I see the, the, the list. Well, you can't, that's a bad example because you can't see photos. Photos doesn't share well over Zoom. So I'm going to share something else. Let's let's find a, a web page. So let's say I want to share this this web page. So I hit the share button and I see these things. So let's go back to our settings and let's see. Let's see if in the settings when we go to the Siri part, let's say, let's see if we can tell it that we want to um, well, you see where it says show when sharing. Whoops, show. Let me see this just, just one minute here. I've got a screen in the way. Okay, click in the wrong place. Okay, you see, do you see here um, where it says show when sharing, right? Let's see what happens if we turn that off. Okay, so now I'm going to go, go back to my web page and I'm going to try to share this thing. Oh, they're still there, aren't they? Well, well, well. So what I oh, they're there now. They're gone. Okay, so I it was remembering what I did before, but see now they're gone, right? You don't see where's the people? They're not here. So I'm going to put them back. So we're going to get back to the settings. Now maybe you remember from last week or Saturday that if we grab this little gray, this little black bar, and I push it over, it'll go back to the app that I was on before which was settings, right? You see, I'm going back and forth and I'm doing it by putting my finger way down there on that bar that all we ever do is swipe up with. Well, go left and right. So here I am, I'm gonna to go to Siri again. I'm gonna tell Siri to show when sharing. Now I'm gonna come back to, to here. And now when I touch here, the people are back, okay? So I think maybe that answers your question. What do you think? <laughs> gives me a place to practice okay. thank you okay I, I have an interesting commentary on that christian okay great let's have it i send a text message to myself every day like i clip articles or things that i want to read later so i have my own thread uh in messages okay whenever i want to share i never 
and never have popped up in that area. Wow. Well, maybe uh, maybe there's still room for improvement. Improvement. <laughs> 16. I mean, it seems okay. like that's a natural. You just do it every yep. day. Every day. Right. All right. John Lane, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? John. John Lane. Three, two, one. Okay. See you, John. John, see, see you, John. Yeah. Uh, go ahead, John. Sorry about that. I hit the wrong one. Um, your blue ID that you identify certain parts of the screen. How do you set that up? I find that really, really good, and I'd like to use that in my teaching. Oh, that when I'm when I'm marking, like when I do yes. this. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, okay. Well. Session. Okay. Zoom. The I mean, obviously we're using Zoom. Zoom has annotations that are um, available to to draw various shapes. I, I've been drawing most, you know, rectangles, but you can draw, uh, you, you can draw circles and you can pick different colors. And, ah, okay. and so what I have done, so that's the annotations feature is built in. Now the problem with, with Zoom's annotations is um, you, every single thing seems to take two clicks. Like if I want to go from being a, a circle to being a, um, Oh, I just just lost my, uh, right. my sharing. It's coming back. I don't know what that. It might have been my phone went to sleep. Okay, so um, if I wanted to go from drawing circles to drawing squares, I have to go to a menu and pull down, and it's it's kind of trouble. So what I've done is over here. I have another phone. Um, you can't quite see because there. This phone has a bunch of buttons that I programmed that that trigger the square and trigger the color. So if I wanted to draw a box, I can draw a box. If I want to draw it in green, I can draw it in green. If I want to draw it in blue, I can draw it in blue. And if I want to erase it, I can just tap another button. So this is this is really groovy stuff. What I'm doing here with this phone, this phone here, if you can see my picture, you won't see it on the, mm -hmm. oh wait, I can show you on the screen, wait a minute. I'm using, this is, this is going to, this is a great way for you to, to spend um, a long time fooling around. This is a program called Stream Deck. Stream Deck lets me put icons on, on my iPhone screen that control my Mac, all right? So, so you, you get the Stream Deck program. Um, you, you search for that uh, you, and you get that for free. And then you get an app on your phone that's called Stream Deck. And now I have an extra phone sitting in a little easel and I can reach over and I can, if I tap this button that looks like a calendar, it launches the calendar. So that keeps me from having to reach all the way with the mouse and do it. I just, I just reach over and have this panel that runs things. Well, on another phone, I've made a panel that has buttons that, um, that draw boxes and that change colors. So. That's how I'm doing it so quickly. Oh, wow. So, and, you know, mm -hmm. Stream Deck lets you do many interesting things. Like if you want to play mm -hmm. sounds, you know, I can do that or I can. So you can do a lot of fun stuff, but but this is really useful. So why I have this set up. Actually, we're going to get really geeky here. This phone is the kind of phone that can charge wirelessly. So I have a little easel that's a charger. It's a little rack. And when I put the phone in the charger, because I've made a shortcut that, uh, that's another class, we'll do shortcuts someday. The shortcut knows that whenever it's, the phone's getting charged, it should switch to the program that you see on the screen there. Mm -hmm. And so it, it does it automatically. So I, I'm gonna do it right here. I'm gonna take my phone. Here's my phone and it's obviously not on uh, the, uh, that particular app, I'm going to just set it down in the rack and I'm not going to touch it. And what should happen here is yes, it switched automatically. So, so Stream Deck, we could do a whole class on Stream Deck, but that's yeah. that is how I do it. That's a really good question. Glad you, glad oh, you thank you. And, and let me make a commentary on that because uh, recently, uh, during the gift guide presentation, 
I presented a uh, like a very large mouse pad and some of the lights and Dan Wozniak was talking about some of the equipment that he was using. Uh, all of this Elgato uh, used to uh, produce a television app, which I use forever. It was really cool. But then they sold all of that off and now they are in gaming. And some of the best equipment to use in any uh, environment is being produced by gamers. And Elgato uh, devices, whether it be their uh, lights or um, their equipment, Stream Deck, they also have a uh, switch, a physical switch uh, for uh, their Stream Deck, in addition to the app that goes on the iPad. So if you're looking into equipment, that will help you extend uh, your experience and working with the Mac. Gaming may be something you need to look at. Right, very good. Yeah, those Elgato people are doing some really neat things. It's uh, I just discovered this, mm -hmm. and yeah, they do sell they sell a a little box that has a panel on it. They sell mm -hmm. their own their own panel, and it it's got glass buttons and the buttons are easily customized and they do the things that I just showed you with my phone. But, you know, I already had the phone and I actually mm -hmm. bought one of those panels from Elgato and it, it doesn't have really the quality feel that the iPhone does. So I, I'm sending that back. Now, in order to use it on the iPhone, I have to pay them $2.99 a month. Mm -hmm. But I think it's, uh, it's a nicer experience for me to, um, to be using the you know the, the kind of touch panel that I'm used to, which is the um, the iPhone, and it puts a, one of my old iPhones to use, which is great. Okay, okay. so we're now we're wrapping up. Do we have any others? Uh, any other uh, gaming, questions? Is gaming the name or app address? No, uh, no, Don. Gaming is the industry. Gaming. That's what I mean. Uh, Elgato. Uh, look at Elgato.com. Uh, James Corsica, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Christian, I'd like to use that annotation feature in my tutoring, which I do over Zoom, uh, but I can't seem to find it in any of the menus at, at the okay. top of Zoom. Is it only active when you're the host, or yeah. what? Yeah, you have to you you have to be sharing. If you if you share if you're sharing your screen, um, you'll see a new button that'll say annotate. Okay. Now um, you're allowed to when you set up a meeting, you're allowed to let others annotate if you want them to. That's usually a, a mistake. You get too many people drawing on the screen. So um, it, it appears that, that Sheeta and, and Eckert and George have, have made it so that not too many people can annotate. So that's why the button's not there for you now. Okay. But it's, but it's, it's in that floating, it's in the palette that shows you the big green share button and the chat and it's, it's over there. Okay, thanks. Okay. okay. All right, uh, uh, Cynthia Nicholson, can you unmute yourself and ask your question? Um, hi, yeah, back when you were editing actions after trying to print from an iPhone screen, yes. um, I, I have like four options and I don't know, you had was several, it, how do you it, add more? Like this giant list here, this is what you're talking I, about? I have four, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, and when I hit edit actions, nothing happens. Yeah, well, you hit edit actions, you should be able to at least get a list and either, you know, drag things around like this or add things to the list. Now, these are these here are standard with Safari. These here are not. These are these were me. And the and the way we did these is these are actually these are shortcuts. OK, so these are shortcuts that um, that I made the option to add to sharing. So, that, so with shortcuts, shortcuts is an app on the phone that is um, relatively new. It's a few years, you know, it's a few years into the system, and you can um, you if you use it, you can customize your phone even more. And so, if you have somebody that you share with all the time, you might want to make a shortcut that would show up in the share sheet. And so you start with shortcuts is what you do. I guess is what I'm trying to say is you start with shortcuts. And when you make the shortcut, you say, I want to add it. I'll show you super fast. Here's shortcuts. Um, 
I could, when you have a shortcut, you can, um, you, you have options here and you can say whether it's gonna be in the share sheet or not. Okay, so this is, shortcuts is kind of an advanced thing. We'll have to have a class on that someday. But the idea is that I've, I made those myself. That's why they're there. Okay, all right. Uh, it is 12.44. And for those of you who are interested in saving the chat, if you go to the chat pod and click on the ellipse in the lower right corner and just click save chat, it will save the chat for you. And uh, we will probably send that out to you as well when the link for the video comes out. Uh, we have time for one more question. I, I saw it. Let me let me uh, just see, uh, Jill. Um, I think someone was asking about the bar at the bottom. Oh, that was John. So when you're when you're in when you're on the home screen, you don't see that bar that I said you could move back and forth in order to switch apps. But if you're in an app, like here, I'm in the mail. That's when you see the bar, okay? Because normally you see that bar to pull up and get out of this, right? To go back to the home screen. But when you once you're on the home screen, the bar is gone. So you've got to be in an app to switch to a different app. Okay, so just sort of pan across, put it in your finger way down there at the bottom and just push it around left and right. There you go. That's a really fast way to switch. You know, if, if you're, if what you're doing is maybe you're writing an email and you want to refer to something on a web page, you can go back and forth, back and forth quite easily. Uh, instead of doing it in three steps, you're doing it like in, in one. 